Well hello there and welcome to my workshop. Now you're going to hear the mower in the background today so I apologise for that. But in this episode I'm going to have a go at bracing. I've got my Alex Willis step-by-step -step guitar making book at the ready. Although I don't think I'm going to quite use the bracing he's suggesting. I'm going to use classical bracing. And I'm also going to be taking this off. See if the glue's stuck properly. We'll soon find out. And I've got a mouse just up there. Get out. Ah. Not sure how we're going to do this. Okay, so moment of truth. Yeah, okay, let me just unscrew these. Now then, I think I'm going to unscrew that. <laughs> right, need a scraper. I cleverly put um, wax around the centre there, but I didn't think of putting wax on the base, which was a bit silly. But uh, yeah, it's come off. So I've got to see if I can just try and get that middle out now. That's going to be easier said than done, isn't it? Nice. Well, that looks okay. It's obviously got to be sanded flush and uh, smoothed off in the middle there. But uh, yeah, I think that looks okay. Reasonable edge. Okay. got that nice and flush with the top. I did it with um, some 120 grip on the orbital sander and then I just finished off with 240. So that's that's nice. I also took the opportunity to do a bit more sanding on the body. We're getting there slowly but surely. That's quite a major job that one. Right now then the bracing. Just got to put this back on this board, right there, right there, right in the middle, get that nice and centred. It'll just keep it uh, nice and secure for me while I sort out this bracing. Okay, so my idea, I found this uh, photograph on the uh, internet and uh, I think I'm going to have a go at this fan bracing. So apparently it gives you uh, deeper bass tones, which sounds really good to me. So it looks like I need a brace across there, the fan bracing going out, obviously a piece to support the bridge, and another brace there. Now I believe quarter sawn spruce is the ideal wood for bracing. I don't have any, unfortunately. I do have a piece of this C16 pine and I, if I cut it right I can get a near enough quarter sawn uh, section. So I'm going to use this. Looking at the old bracing it looks like they used whatever scraps of wood they had laying around because they're all different by the looks of things. But uh, 
There you go. I took the opportunity while I had the thicknesser out to thickness all the blanks for the top and the sides and uh, I discovered that uh, Sobrano really doesn't like the thicknesser. I mean I've got a beautiful finish on the uh, rosewood, absolutely no problem with the rosewood, it's beautiful um, and the thin pieces cut beautifully but the Sobrano, well it just chips out so I may, I may come up with a different wood for the top. <sighs> yeah, oh well. Let's empty this basket. Okay, well I'm back in the workshop after a few days break and I've been fiddling around on the computer drawing out how I want this fan bracing to look. I'm afraid there's nothing scientific behind my approach here. Um, but I think this is going to work. Uh, so I've also printed myself off a copy. I've got the wood, I've got the design. Let's get to it. I've marked out the position of the um, braces at the front there. And I've put one across the bridge because I want to actually use a brace to secure the bridge rather than having a plate there. Um, I actually marked the position of the bridge out with the old bridge just lining it up on the holes uh, but I'm going to make a new one. So I've got those main braces in place now so I think I'll cut these to size first and then I'll sort out the uh, the fan bit. I use my contoured surface here to uh, to get the shape of the bottom of the braces. Uh, let's do that. It's done the trick. Just want to shape the uh, top of the brace a little bit, make it look a nice little bit nicer. Now after a little bit of faffing around I managed to get the uh, positions of my fan braces drawn onto this guitar so now I'm going to uh, produce those braces. I'm going to make them about 5mm thick so I need to just do thin these down a little bit more.
Okay, I've cut all my fan braces. So now what I need to do is just mark up where these fan braces are going to go through this cross brace. So I should just put a little mark at each point. Uh, there, there, and there. So they're the center points. Then I just need to cut out the profile of those and I'm just going to do it by eye I think. Okay I'm going to cut these slots out now so I don't know if you can see that but I've marked where the uh, braces will have to go through and I've also marked a little angle to show which angle they're going through at. Now for the backing music of this particular video, I thought I'd have a go and try a little bit of synthesizer stuff. So there's not so many guitars on this, this backing track, but uh, I've been using a free synthesizer for the uh, well, a VST instrument, if uh, you're interested in those sorts of things, um, called Vital. And it is really good amazing piece of software for creating really interesting sounds. I think I'm going to glue down these cross beams first, these cross braces, um, and then I can fit the other uh, fan braces in afterwards. So to do that, I'm going to need to press that down quite hard. And I've got my little clamping jig here, which I can just screw that down onto that piece of wood. So hopefully that should do the job. Let's get some glue. So I'll get it the right way round. Right, I think I'll leave those three to cure before I try and fit the fan braces. And um, I think I'll pop off for a cup of tea. Right, I'm back, cup of tea and a homemade Chelsea bun later, although one of my homemade Chelsea buns, and quite honestly, it doesn't taste like a Chelsea bun. Never mind. Right, let's see what we've got here. I should be able to unclick this. And um, that's looking reasonably good. We could uh, do with letting it dry a little bit more, but I think it's dried enough for me to get these other 
fan pieces in and get those glued down. Just got to mention that we're going to replace some skirting board in our lounge. So I've got long skirting boards all in the workshop floor. It's the only place I can keep them. And it's a nuisance because I can't get near the workbench. <sighs> Hopefully they'll go soon. Let's see what we can do with these pieces. First of all, I need to sort them into the lengths. Let's get the long ones, two long ones, two medium, it's a medium, that's a medium, two short ones. So short ones are going to go there. I think I'll swap that one over. Short one, short one, a medium, medium. I'll just take it up to that cross piece there. All right, I'm not going to push that in too much because I think what I'll do is uh, just take a little bit off the top of there. Okay, back to gluing. Okay, so we're going to clamp this lot down. So I think that can go there. beetle off and I need something on the back. That'll do. So let's see if we can get that in position. I'm going to leave this overnight to cure now I've added some more clamps and small blocks of wood on there so the whole lot's being pressed down nice and tight so that should be good I think I'm just going to tidy up now well I left this overnight so uh, let's see what we've got And there we have the braces in place. Now, they need a bit of shaping. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Well, I was about to start carving then, and then all the hell broke loose in the roof here, scratching, you name it, running around. So I thought, oh, I've got to deal with this. So whatever it was there, well, I know what it was there. It was a squirrel and uh, it got in there through a little hole because uh, I've had to make a little hatch on the outside so I can get in to see what's going on and it ran out when I uh, sawed the hole on the other side I don't know what that is I think that might be a mouse so another access hole there and I'm afraid there's a mouse trap up there so I'm slightly worried because the wiring runs through the uh, the roof there but uh, Okay, back to the carving. Now, <laughs> I've seen uh, Gabrielle Retty do this and other people do this and they make it look so easy. Uh, I'm just going to take my time and shape the end of these struts and take a bit of weight out of them too. Because I guess the heavier these are, the more they'll deaden the sound. I'm assuming that's what happens. And these are quite thick at the moment. So, a bit of careful chiseling. How about a bit of careful chiseling along with some nice soft music? Hey, that sounds good, Dave.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like I've made some progress in this episode. I've got the uh, the bracing in, and I'm um, quite pleased the way that's all looking. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure there's any tone in that, but um, I'm going to have to sort out the the top of this uh, this uh, the ribs here. But uh, it's looking pretty good. I've actually sanded the whole thing down now. So I'm right back to, well, the wood. And unfortunately, I'd stained it with cherry stain last time, which has, has, has left its mark on the veneer there. I want to use some sort of oil to, to take the whole thing a little bit darker and give it a sort of a richness. So uh, if there's any suggestions for the type of oil that I might use on this, i uh, be uh, very grateful for that. Um, I'm pretty sure that this neck was a, a much darker color and the sides were a darker color but um, I only have pictures of how it was after I'd done that um, well bodge really <laughs> so I'm not sure what the color of the original guitar was anyway it's getting there there's one more thing I want to do before I finish this episode and that is to to glue this brace which has split down the bottom. So I'm just gonna get on with that quickly and then I'll be quite happy. If you're new to this channel and you're wondering what this beast is here, um, I will put a link to the video where I made it up in the top corner. But basically what it does is give me a very slight concave surface. And I achieved that by pulling it in the center with a bolt there and propping it up on the edges there. And so the effect is that that all dips down and that gives me just a, a very slight um, radius on the top there, which is really nice. Just uh, just lifts it slightly, but um, it's very useful. And uh, it's also useful for clamping as well. Now I've put together this little jig thing, which I can, press down on the brace and hopefully clamp on each side. So let's get some glue. I think that should do the trick. It looks pretty firm. So just leave that to dry now. And with that, I'm gonna call this video done. Thank you very much for watching this episode and thank you for all your comments. I really do appreciate them. And if you've got any ideas of what sort of oil might work best on this guitar, then I really would appreciate it. Um, I'm really pleased with the way the sound holes come out. I forgot to mention that <laughs> When this guitar was originally bought, there was a, a decoration around there. I believe it was just paper uh, and it went when I sanded it off when I did my previous refurbishment. Um, but I'm pleased with <laughs> the replacement. Um, I'm also pleased with the back there where I've got those braces in. So that's, uh, it's all coming on. It's looking good, exciting. And we will be starting the new guitar soon. And on that note, I see from the Guitar Builders Collective Forum, the welcome space, that there is going to be a Jürgen Zoller Cup. This is a challenge, which I believe is similar to the Use What You Got challenge, which uh, we ran a few years ago in the uh, in the lockdown. And um, well, I, I've only just spotted it, so all the details are on the uh, Guitar Builders Collective, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So if you're an amateur guitar builder or even a professional guitar builder and you'd like to take part in this Build It For Fun challenge, then just head along and have a look. And I think I'm going to be building my new acoustic as part of that challenge because I do enjoy being part of a, a build community and um, hopefully my acoustic guitar is going to be a little bit different uh, and uh, sort of reflect the uh, approach that Jürgen used to take when he built his guitars so um, yeah that's really exciting anyway I'm off in the meantime you stay safe I'll see you soon cheers mm -hmm.